We're here today to talk about horseweed biology and management. Horseweed is important to us because it's become resistant to many of the herbicides that we use and it's causing us great consternation as we can see in this field. Now, herbicide resistance as we know it is, that's not a new phenomenon. 1968 was the first recorded, uh, first confirmed resistance uh, to triazine herbicides uh, with common groundsel. Since then, we've had many more weeds that have become resistant. Now, what's important about the horseweed is that it has become resistant to three of the four major herbicide classes of herbicides that we use in our burn down programs in cotton. Now, Normally, what we, we like to use in our burn down program consists of Roundup, our glyphosate, the ALS chemistry, such as the Resolves, the Staples, uh, Invokes, etc. Those are the ALS chemistries, the PPO chemistry, such as, uh, uh, such as Reflex and Valor, your Ignite herbicide, are all what we use in our burn down program. This particular weed has become resistant to three of those. Now, We've learned to manage horseweed in much of the cotton belt by using a product called dicamba. And we'll talk a little bit more about the use of dicamba and horseweed control. Now, if we can see horseweed is a, basically a single stem. It starts out as a rosette. Uh, as smaller than, uh, than a nickel, uh, comes into a single stem that may get five to six feet tall. As opposed to this multi-stem horseweed, and we see this in many of our, our fields. The reason this one has multiple stems, earlier in the season, we attempted to burn down with glyphosate. Sprayed this with glyphosate, we, we actually took the terminal out, and therefore, now we've got six and eight stems instead of the single stem. So in actuality, we're in worse shape than we were initially. So with the growth and development of horseweed, it initially starts out as a uh, single rosette and then grows throughout the, the winter and spring months and starts to bolt. And by bolting, we mean obviously coming, uh, starting a tall single stem out of that rosette get to five to six feet tall, produces seed in August. Each of these plants that we see here in this field capable of producing as many as 200,000 seed. A typical plant will produce somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 100,000 seed. These seed are little plume on little plumes and blow in the wind. Some of our modeling efforts for this have shown that if the weed is five to six feet tall, the seed can move into the wind and travel as much as 200 miles. Typically, we don't think they travel that far. Typically, we think that they travel more in the way of a few feet to a few miles. Uh, to 20 to 50 miles are probably the typical movement of horseweed. The significance of this distribution of horseweed is that Certainly, good management practices are important, but just because you practice good management in your weed control program does not mean you'll not have horseweed. What your neighbor does and what your people around you in the, in the non-crop area will also impact the soil seed bank or the seed that are flying through the air and coming into the field. So when we travel around and look at fields of uh, horseweed, it doesn't necessarily mean that that farmer has not done a good job controlling horseweed in the past. Just means that somewhere in this neighborhood, there's been a lot of horseweed going to seed. Not only does horseweed compete with our crop, as we can see here, and it's unsightly, and many farmers uh, take more pride in their, their farm and will not allow horseweed to come into a field. Now, the other thing though, important is that this is a major host for tarnished plant bug. Tarnished plant bug love horseweed. They come into the plant, uh, into the field. They're attracted to this plant. They lay eggs on it. When those uh, tarnished plant bug eggs hatch, the cotton is ready to be attacked. And sure enough, we have a tarnished plant bug problem in our cotton. Our entomology friend really stressed the importance of getting these weeds out of the field early on in order to prevent infestations of tarnished plant bugs. 
The horseweed is a native of North America, actually was used by the Native Americans as our early settlers came to America. Uh, the Indians introduced this to our uh, early settlers as a, a plant that had medicinal properties such as uh, being a plant that would stop bleeding. If you got uh, a cut, then you could take this, make a paste out of it, and sure enough, uh, clot the blood. Now, in addition to that, they ground this, made a tea out of it, and used it uh, for dysentery and for treatment of diarrhea. So, uh, a weed with a lot of history, but one now that's causing us major problems. We first discovered horseweed resistant uh, to glyphosate in, in our state. We put out over a thousand plots in a couple of years trying to learn the techniques for controlling this particular pest. Out of all of the treatments that we've looked at, dicamba has been the product of choice. Dicamba at eight ounces combined with any of our other burn down products such as Roundup or, or uh, uh, Gramoxone, any of those have worked very well for us. Now, there are times when I've had farmers that did call me and say, Dr. Ken, we just don't get the control that we were expecting out of our dicamba. Dr. Ken, I've done everything you've told me to do, and yet I'm still getting some regrowth. Almost without fail, those have been when the application has not been quite as good as it should have been. We're not getting quite the coverage that we should get. In other words, we're going too fast, not enough volume, and are uh, putting it out when the wind's blowing and we're taking out only one side of the horseweed. Other things that will affect this is if it is a dry, cold spring. Dry and cold soil, the weed's not growing, the weed will not take in the herbicide, and oftentimes we'll see some regrowth after that. These weeds that we're seeing here today obviously were sprayed with only with glyphosate as a burn down program, and that has not been adequate and will not be adequate for much of the belt. And we know that horseweed is a very competitive plant and one that will reduce yield. Notice that not only does it reduce yield later on, but even now. Notice the, the cotton along this row, and as we get here by this plant, it drops off, comes back up as we get past the plant and back out away from the influence of the horseweed that's taken out the moisture, and also horseweed has some allelopathic compounds that come out. Those are the compounds we talked about with medicinal purposes, but those compounds are also injurious to cotton. So, a very competitive weed, one we need to get out early. Yeah, horseweed germinate 10 months out of the year. Most of the horseweed that we see in this field are large, meaning that they probably germinated in the, in the fall, live through the winter, and uh, have escaped application of herbicides this spring. This particular little horseweed, one that came up in the spring, one that uh, germinated probably uh, after the field was worked this spring and uh, has come in uh, and will cause us problems before the end of the year. The highly prolific nature of horseweed is the high seed production and the extremely efficient distribution flying in the plume is a reason why, although we first discovered glyphosate resistance in horseweed in year 2000 in Delaware, within the next three years, it already spread to 10 other states as far south as Arkansas. <laughs>